And he struggled against the Pirates after leading the National League in hitting. At the left fielder, Gladden. Two out. Gladden didn't realize he was going to carry that far for a moment, but he stayed with it, and there are two gone. comes up with two out and the base is empty. There's Brian Hunter on the bench along with Keith Mitchell. Marvin Freeman in the picture on the Atlanta bench. And Mark Lemke. Ray's feeling good after winning their first game of this series. Inside to run Gibbs. Ronnie Gann, 0 for 6, and that joins a rather sophisticated group, including Felix Mian, Mickey Rivers, Huey Fritz, and Travis Jackson. Back a few years ago, 24 and 33. And now Jack Morris out in front, and it looks like he doesn't want to give Ronnie Gann any fastballs to swing at. Now that's, uh, that's the book on Gant. and when Morris gets ahead, he throws that Splitter, we mentioned in game one, a real pioneer in that pitch. He opened the eyes of Major League pitchers as to how successful you can be with that pitch. It hits it to third, and a fine play for Pania Rulo. That ball stayed down. The Braves go down in order, and we have a scoreless first. Ball from Smoltz, very distinctively different. Watch the slider to Puckett, breaking parallel to the ground. And now the curveball to Herbeck breaking down to the ground. So you can look for that tonight, the slider and the curveball from Smoltz. Ryan Harper leads it off. And brother, the he takes a bad ball. That's not like him. He hit 311 during the year. He's four out of nine in the series. And leads it off in the second. I guess he had his mind made up. He was going to swing at whatever came up there. Sometimes if you look fastball, you'll swing at it regardless of where it is. Strike two. Well, I bet that gentleman has some baseball stories to tell. Looks like there was no other place he'd want to be than right there. One and two. Chatting with some of the Atlanta coaches, they said Harper scares them as much as anybody in this Minnesota lineup because of his very good bat control. Two and two. Coaching at third base and Ron Garden higher. And across the way, Wayne to Williger. He's been around the block. And back again. Harper hits it into right center field. Justice. Can't get it, and it's going to be a leadoff double for Harper. That play looks strange to you, Tim, with regard to the jump. There's a lot of hang time. I think the reason it looks strange is that Ron Gant was playing Harper into left center. Justice was straight away, and Harper hits it to the gap that's the biggest. The ball hits off the webbing of the glove. But that Brian Harper talking about his bat control, he is a notorious two-strike hitter. He protects the outside part of the plate as he did then and rifles one in the right center. Justice couldn't catch up to it. Second hit for the Twins. This one a leadoff double. Here is Shane Mack. He is 0 for 11. And he hit 310 during the season. Low from John Smoltz. So the Twins with a very good opportunity here in the second to get on top as they did last night. One ball, one strike. Now this youngster doesn't want the game to last as long as last night. School tomorrow. A few kids miss school today here and around the country. One and one to Mack. One and two. That's 
It's an effective pitch that John Smoltz throws. First seven games of the postseason. The Minnesota Twins had a 317 batting average, and last night, with runners in scoring position, they failed in 10 times at bat. Hank is 0 for 12. And Spokes gets his first strikeout. Shane not only 0 for 12, but he has six strikeouts. And this is a darting slider from John Smoltz. Wow. That was a big uh, play for Smoltz because Shane Mack failed to advance the runner to third. So for all intents, it's going to take a hit by the Twins, either by Pagliarulo or Greg Gagnon. Harper not a running threat. Ball one to the Minnesota third baseman. a home with the Twins. Platoon for the most part with Scott Leyes at third. Ball two. wonder how many of these folks were also here last night. one by him. They play this batter straight away in the Atlanta outfield. And none of these outfielders, uh, Smith, Gant, or Justice, are really noted for their throwing on. In the short left, Belliar can't get it, and the run is going to be in time, and it's one to nothing quick. And down to second base on the throw. And Smith probably should have thrown to second. Goes Pagliarulo. A little blooper in the left. The reason Lonnie should have gone to second base is because of the jump that Brian Harper had from second base. Watch Harper. He does not look back. You have to take a chance. Trust your instincts. If Belliard somehow comes up with that ball, Harper's a dead duck. But he trusted his instincts. He scores the first run. And Pagliarulo's on at second base. Oh, a double off the glove by Harper and a blooper in the left by Pagliarulo. And Pagliarulo is at second for Gagne to pick up with one out. Strike one on the breaking pitch to Gagne, who is two for 11. Watch Brian Harper. He does not look back on the single by Pagliarulo at second base. We'll have that for you momentarily. Now, Urillo with a safe lead down there. Strike two to the batter. It's a tough luck inning thus far for Smoltz. And the Twins lead it one to nothing. Second strikeout for Smoltz, both in this inning. This looks like the curveball. Smoltz does not throw a lot of curves, as we mentioned, to right-handed batters, but this one out of the strike zone. And Gagne is out of there. I got the feeling that uh, Smoltz didn't care if he walked Pagliarulo. He threw him a 2-0 breaking ball, a 2-1 breaking ball. But Pagliarulo refused to be walked, and Dumped one into left field to score the run. Now Jack Morris is at the plate. He hit one out in batting practice here the other day. But you wouldn't expect him to hit. Smokes, you never know. Morris, a 157 hitter when he hit in the minor leagues. He had one, one at bat in the regular season back in 1987. Fly to right field. This is tough. As you can see, back on his heel. I think it's more fear than anything else. I mean, when you haven't seen a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, and you've got to go up in the World Series and face it. Frightening. That little BB coming at you, 90 miles an hour. Runner at second, two out. 
And one ball, two strikes. Tom Kelly, the manager of Minnesota, doesn't like it when the designated hitter is not used. First of all, he thinks it ought to be uniform. He either have it and use it in the World Series or don't use it at all. But he likes the DH. He doesn't like that. Horror strikes out. Swalt struck out the side. The Twins get a run on two hits, and now they've left in second line. Realizing the bottom part of the order is coming up, Gagne and the pitcher, and that's the time you really want to take the chance, and it paid off for Harper and the Twins. And you're right about that, Tim. He's the sort of player who would be smart enough to be aware of the fact that the tail end of the batting order is coming up. He's not a fast runner, but he has great instincts on the bases. So the Braves find themselves one run down in the second, and it'll be Justice, Green, and Olsen against Jack Morris. Justice, four out of 12 with a home run. Atlanta went down in order in the first. Morris gets out in front. That was a fastball swing at a splitter. <laughs> Diving out of the strike zone. And the changeup misses. In that 5-2 opener, which the Twins won, Morris pitched seven innings. And two runs on five hits. Struck out three, walked four, and defeated Charlie Lieber. Uh, the folks start that chance. And injustice is in the hole. Game five tomorrow night, no matter who wins or loses here this evening, 8 o'clock Eastern time with... Our telecast of the first pitch at 8.26 down here in Georgia. Two and two. During the season, Moore has allowed 18 home runs. One to nothing, Twins on a double by Harper. A one out single by Pagliarulo. some plays last night and Gagne shows the good glove work again this evening four in a row by Morris well, hey, there's talk about Greg Gagne that you have to see him every day to appreciate him I don't know whether that's true or not I think all you have to do is see him a couple of times and see how good he is great footwork footwork very important to infielders especially those on the left side who have the long throws to make Morris to Breen. Out of play. Sid is two for 11 in the series. And at 300 against his former teammates, the Pirates. seems to pitch rather effortlessly, doesn't he? Really stays on top. One of those guys who it looks like he's strange to get on top of the ball. High fastballs and splitters. And there's that split finger delivery, and that gives Morris his first strikeout. He has retired five in a row. Not a lot of difference between the speed of the Morris fastball and the Morris split finger. And there are the split fingers right there talk about an aptly named pitch diving down out of the strike zone to get green Olsen bats with the bases empty this fellow has been in the middle of everything he has had three hits four walks 
Ball into him. Minnesota manager Tom Kelly said, Yeah, it's not the hits that Olsen's been getting. It's the walks that have been given up by his pitchers. He said he's a good ball player. Got to challenge him more. That's ball two. Base runners to this point. Out of play, and it's two and one. We get a whale of a view from <laughs> Airship Shamu from SeaWorld in Orlando, Florida. Three and one to Olsen. Minnesota, the hometown of this batter. He walks again. That's his fifth walk in the series. And it comes with two out here in the second. Mark Lipke is warmly applauded here. last night sent everybody home in the 12th inning and the winning hit in the left field switch hitter and two for eight Lemke known affectionately by his manager Bobby Cox the moniker of dirt and dirt did it last night David Justice on at second base and a little looper to left field Dan Gladden's throw is to the dugout side and Justice's slide is to the first base slide. It was not a very good throw from Gladden in left. Harper made a good effort at the plate. Just missed tagging with him. Otherwise, we'd still be here. Playing game three. Yeah, Dirt did it last night. It's a good name. That's a, Only in baseball can you have a name like Dirt and have it be a compliment. Ted Corrales, the first base coach of Atlanta, says this is little guy. Lemke just wears me on. I can't hit enough fungos to keep him happy. He struts it in a left center, and it gets down. And Olsen back to second base. Lemke gets another hit. That's his third. They certainly played deep in that Minnesota outfield. Yeah, too deep. Kirby Puckett plays about as deep a center field as you can play. And, of course, uh, with two outs and a runner at first, you want to play too deep, but you gotta, you got to modify that somewhat. This ball with enough hang time, and it could have been caught. Olsen rounding second. With two outs, he decides to stop. That's what you do. You run through the bag and not to the bag. Make your decision after you turn. With two outs, no, no way you take a chance to go to third. So Dirt did it again. Two out walk. Single by Lemke and Belliard is up. And Jack Morris gets out the front. Belliard is two for six. With a couple of runs batted in. Bucket is still playing very deep. Right fielder is cheating in. Two on, two out. Into right field, and Shane Mack is right there to take the foul ball and end the inning. And Atlanta leads two, and after two, they trail one to nothing. Old Moon. Old Moon, a full ballpark. And the top of the order for the Twins. Dan Gladden comes up against John Smoltz. Gladden grounded to short to start this game. High in the air for Gant. Basement, 
Minnesota's second baseman, Chuck Knobloch, had a wasted double in the first inning. There's Jimmy Williams, the coach, moving the defense around along with Jim Beecham, who just walked by the picture. Knobloch has chased off the plate. He's had five out of 12 here in series play. That's one of the prices you have to pay when you're a good hitter. Chuck will get used to that his first year. Odds on favorite to be the rookie of the year in the American League. Another one for Gant. Four in a row retired by John Smokes. This franchise, by the way, speaking of rookies of the year, has produced five. Originally the Washington Senators, and back in 1958, Albie Pearson was the rookie of the year, followed by Bob Allison in 59, Tony Oliva in 64, there they are, Rod Carew in 67, and John Castino in 1979. The last three rookies, Oliva, Carew, and Castino, all with the Minnesota Twins. Market is up, fly deep to right his first time, and takes a strike. Kirby one for 13. That's not like him. 319 hitter during the season. Strike two. Tom Kelly saying that Kirby Puckett can get 10 hits faster than any player in the major leagues. Lightning fast. And sure enough, in the ALCS, 0 for his first six, then 8 for, for his next 14. Just got a piece of that one, cut the stroke down. He's had one hit and 13 at bats, and that hit was a home run here last night. He is from Chicago. Down one and two. This bucket has unusual dimensions. He is strong, and he is built like a rock. Short, quick stroke. Take a look from upstairs for a moment, and a hard hit ball past Pendleton. That'll be a hit for Kirby with two out. Looked like one under his glove. After a lot of uh, breaking balls, there's a situation where if you're John Smoltz, you just have to give a hitter credit. Did go under the diving Pendleton's glove. You remember Terry is nursing that sore left knee that he sprained. He will have that operated on after the season. But after a bevy of sliders, Puckett hammering that fastball by Smoltz. Herbeck rounded out his first time. He's three out of 13. to him. We'll be batting the number four spot tonight. <laughs> Herbeck pulling our leg. <laughs> he pulled a Ron Gant leg off the bag in game two. That was the thing to which Jack was referring earlier. <laughs> one and one. Puckett is taking a very conservative lead at first, being held by Sid Bream. He stole 11 bases during the season. I don't think Kirby will try to run until the count is one and two on her bet. Anytime there's a favorable hitting situation, I think Puckett will stay there. Herbeck pops it up for Belliard. The Twins have left three, but they have a one nothing lead. We'll return to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium after this message. <laughs> Herbeck by a vowel from Bennett. They're having some good-natured fun with the Twins' first baseman. John Smoltz had seven hits during the year. Strike one to him from Jack Morris. When John Smoltz was growing up in the shadows of Tiger Stadium in Detroit, he used to go watch Jack Morris pitch. Here he is facing him in a World Series. And taking two strikes. Matter of fact, Smoltz signed with the Tigers initially and came to the Atlanta Braves in 87 for Doyle Alexander. One 
One and two. It'll be Smoltz and then Lonnie Smith and Terry Pendleton. Braves had a hit and a walk thus far. It's two and two. Smoltz started off like he was going to be a pretty good hitter, but they found ways to get him out, and he had seven hits during the season. And they get him, and Morris gets his second strikeout. Let's turn things over to Pat O'Brien. All right, Jack, thank you for what's become our regular chat with the commissioner. Good evening. The whole country seems to be talking about last night's game. What did the commissioner of baseball think about? It? Well, I was delighted to be here. It was a wonderful game, and I had a pretty good seat. Not the DH. It was a chess match there, and you're in favor of, as a traditionalist, getting rid of the DH. Do you have any support for that? Well, uh, not much. Uh, I thought last night was really the great argument in favor of eliminating the DH. Why? Because of all the maneuvering, the managing, the uh, strategy, I thought it was just wonderful. Who ordered up this weather tonight? Uh, CBS. <laughs> Chatting with the commissioner. Back to you. And Lonnie Smith, strike one. Thanks, Pat. Since the DH in the World Series, pitchers have hit. And 44 games with the DL. DH coming about in 1973. Lonnie Smith chases the ball, and he's out on strikes. The third strikeout for... Jack Morris. Yeah, pitchers don't hit very much in the there World Series. Well, and, and obviously you wouldn't see that type of game in a, in a park that has the DH in an American League park. Like last night, not nearly as much strategy is involved, and that's what uh, the commissioner was implying. Yeah, you know, we'd have never seen a game like that in the uh, American League where they have the designated hitter. 23 players used by the Minnesota Twins. That's a record. 42 players used by both teams. That's a record. Morris is in a groove. Strike one to Pendleton, who lined out to left his first time. And he is two out of 13. Jack Morris is right tonight. Morris working on three days rest. He did it once in the league championship series, but only once during the regular season. Two balls and a strike. And if this series goes seven games, he will be the pitcher in game seven on Sunday night. And there are the starts on three days rest. You see the Minnesota Twins, Morris and Tappany, the only guys during the season, but the Atlanta Braves Smoltz with five, Avery with four, and Glavin with four, working on three days rest. Now goes to three and one to Pendleton. There's a guy who never gets a rest. He caught the last 32 meaningful games. I say meaningful because when the Braves clinched the next to the last day of the season, Olsen didn't catch on that Sunday, but he's caught about every inning in the postseason play. And it hits it very well, and it carries out in the right center. Tied. Shop. They're going to have to call this the lift shot. 
Watch Terry Pendleton lift this 3-1 fastball out of the ballpark. Now we'll take a base, a base hit look off the bat of Ron Kent. That's the third hit of the night for Atlanta. And by the way, the first postseason home run ever for Terry Pendleton. This is his third World Series. And that tied the game here in the third inning. And a big threat to run. And justice to batter. Ball on the hill. There's a David Justice fan. before the game that the Braves had to start opening things up. They did it last night because Justice stole in the 12th inning. That allowed him to score on the single by Lemke. That's only their second stolen base of the series. And there are a lot of advocates that in a situation like that, why steal and take the hole away? But with two outs, what's the difference? I mean, if he hits the ball in the hole, you got runners at first and third and two outs. I'd say go for it. If you can steal the base, go for it. Anytime. First stolen base in the series for Kent. In the third, and Kent hits for third. And no throw. away from Harper and look at the instincts of Ron Gant diving in the third without a play and with two out Harper wisely held the ball and a third with two gone and a 3-0 count to justice and folks he's swinging So will the catcher, Brian Harper. And so will the pitching coach. Dick Such joins the group. See, you saw Ron Gant stealing second base. And we talked about holding the runner at first base. Now you don't send the runner at first because the hole will produce a run. With two outs and just the runner at first base, leaving the hole open wouldn't produce a run. All it would do would be to move the runner to third base. But now with runners at first and third, you stop the runner at first. That produces the hole in that area. You can see Knobloch playing deep. Her best holding justice. So the hole is open, and you don't send the runner now. Two balls, no strikes to count to Sid Breed. And he rolls one back to the pitcher who makes the unassisted put out, and the inning is over. Atlanta gets a run to tie it. 
They leave two. They've left four. We played three, and it's 1-1. One, one. In the second, Brian Harper leads it off. He has scored the Minnesota run. Ball one. Smith, perhaps, and he couldn't get it. It's a base hit for Harper. That's his second of the night. Bonnie Smith didn't get a good jump on that ball. He broke back to his left and then in. And those precious steps that you take early are often the difference between making the catch and not. You see him breaking to his left, and back there was a slight hesitation and he has to dive for the ball and misses it another hit for Harper another hit is right he has two tonight and six out of 11 in the series a good play there by Greg Olson nice try by Lonnie Smith but he is not a good defensive left fielder a little late break and Gant backing up to hold Harper to a single. Harper doubled off the glove of Justice in a ball that might have been caught. And he singles in front of Lonnie Smith. Shane Mack struggling to get his first hit in the World Series. Struck out his first time, and he is 0 for 12. The Twins would like to be able to say that Mack is back in town, but he hasn't been able to do anything. the second time in the game the twins have put their leadoff man on base two and one Hardenhire flashes the signs sometimes when a fella has trouble hitting such as Shane Mack they put the hit and run on to try to help him stay on the ball that's right runner not going and a half swing and that's ball three. The reason that the hit and run with a struggling hitter is a good play is because when you hit and run, you have to sure, make sure that you make contact. You don't try to do too much with the bat. You don't overswing. You just put the ball in play. It's just like a golf swing. It's a game of half swings. has allowed five base hits. Three and two. Well, the option facing Tom Kelly now. Do you send the runner with the batter who has struck out six times in 12 at-bats in this series? Harper is not a fast runner. Max swings through a lot of pitches. He has already struck out once tonight. Runner not going. And a ground ball to Feliar. He get one. That's all. Now Mack is 0 for 13. And he runs the bases. 13 stolen bases during the regular season. Brian Harper with a hard slide into Mark Lemke at second base. Clean and hard. You have to be able to touch the bag. You see him go after him with the feet and watch him come back with a bag. All you have to do when you slide at second is touch the bag. Be able to touch the bag. And that's why you saw Harper, even though it wasn't that important, he was already out, but he made the umpire make sure that he saw his hand touch the bag. Now, Mack, who's a bigger threat to run with Cagliarillo up there, draws the throw. Cagliarillo drove it a run in the second with a blooper in the left. And Spoltz gets ahead on the count. At the conclusion of this evening's game, Tim McCarver and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. 
Chevrolet will donate $1,000 on the player's behalf to the Special Olympics. Last night it was Mark Lemke. Runner going and a perfect hit and run single. And they challenge Lonnie Smith and he wisely throws into second base. Cal Yarulo is two for two. And the Twins have a big trick going with one out. I'll tell you, Jack, that's exactly what we were talking about. Mike Pagliarulo not trying to do too much with the pitch. The head was right on the ball when the ball made contact with the bat. And he, he just hits the, look at that swing right there. The head down, and it trickles through on the left side. Short stop covering on the play as Pagliarulo is more of a pull hitter, especially with the hole open. But a fine piece of hitting by Mike Pagliarulo on the hit and run. And Lonnie Smith did the right thing. First and third, one out. The batter, Gagney. And ball one. Gagney, a strikeout victim in the second inning. With the pitcher coming up next, the hitter, Gagney. Gagney already with a three-run homer, but he struck out his first time up. The squeeze situation right here. So we'll watch Shane Mack, the runner at third. <laughs> That's ball two. The one thing you don't want to do if a squeeze is on and you're the runner at third base, you don't want to break too soon. Eddie Stanky, who was a terrific baseball man for many, many years, used to say that the best technique if you're the runner at third is to take one step back toward the bag. That keeps you from breaking too soon. If you break too soon, the pitcher will pitch out or knock the hitter down. Tom Kelly talking to Jack Morris just in case Gagney walks and he's up there hitting with the bases loaded. Hmm. And Gagney makes the count two and one. The runner at third is Shane Mack. Reached out of fielder's choice. Pagliarulo's two for two. Bases with one out in the fourth of a 1 1 game. Squeeze play, and they missed it. They've got Mack. And he's out. The other runner down the second. So he gave Gagney one pop on the 2 0 pitch. Look at Mack at third base. He doesn't break too fast. The pitch is a slider low and away, and Mack's a dead duck. He slips. The tag is made. And on the play, Pagliarulo moves to second. You see Mack not leaving too soon. That's the technique. He did his job. Gagne didn't make contact. It's tough to punt that pitch low and away like that. Out of the strike zone, yeah. Now the runner down to second base with two out. Now you want to be careful with Morris on deck and two out and the runner in, in scoring position. Two two pitch. And Gagne got a good swing at that one. Too good. John Smoltz got away with a mistake there. With Jack Morris on deck and the go ahead run on second base, you really have to be careful to Gagne. Wins about hit the Braves 6 3. We're tied 1 1 in the fourth. Second time and a ball in the dirt. Out at first, and the inning is over. Two hits, but only one left. The Twins have left four. We're tied. Fourth, the squeeze in order here. Watch the pitch in that area, and Gagne swinging through it or bunning through it. And this is Shane Mack at third, and the pitcher. And watch how Mack waits until the ball is about to be released to break. The Mac, all he can do is break. Obviously, he can't do anything about laying the ball down. So he broke at the right time, but Gagne just didn't make contact and a squeeze play that didn't work. A couple of times, Tim, during recent spring trainings, I've 
stood in there at the plate against a pitching machine programmed to throw sliders. Oh, and away. Man, he can't touch that ball. I couldn't. <laughs> Some pitchers think that that's the best pitch to throw in a bunning situation because it keeps going away from the hitter. Now, Olsen. He's frequently been in the middle of things in this postseason for the Braves against the Pirates and against the Twins, and he walked his first time. He's had three hits, five walks. Count is even, one and one. Lane has left four. Jim Cott right here. Well, the big question with the pitchers coming back on short rest is, will their fastball be as good? So far through this part of the game, Jack Morris's fastball is right there with what it was in game one, upper 80s, low 90s. Olsen is called out. That's the fourth strikeout for the Minnesota Hurler. Olsen walks away shaking his head. Jim, I know you are an advocate of a four-man staff. You're a guy who always pitched with three games, three days rest, and it was your line that uh, it'll rust out before it'll wear out. Well, you got that right. I think what it does more than anything for you, Tim, is you're sharper, and you economize your pitches. You don't throw as many balls. A strike to Limke. I think Bobby Cox getting 141 starts out of four guys this year, about as close to a four-man staff. As any team in baseball. I know that managers are very interested in protecting young pitchers, but if trained properly, I, I think that's so overrated, the extra day's rest. A lot of pitchers don't know what to do with that extra day. They'd rather pitch you the fourth day. They're too strong, right? Count is gone to two balls and a strike on Lemke, who continued his hitting, getting a single in the second. Room up the middle as he bats and takes ball three. Home half of the fourth, 1 1 game. Bobby Cox told us that he had 14 people living at his house during the World <laughs> Series. That's, yeah, that's why he likes to get to the ballpark early. <laughs> 14 folks. So he's out here about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Three two foul. First World Series as a manager for Bobby Cox. He was a coach, however, for the 1977 Yankees. Played the Dodgers, beaten by Tommy Lasorda in his first year. Actually, the Yankees won. That's right, the Yankees won in 77 78. Lemke gets another hit. He's two for two. A good, well, I'm about to say a good play by Puckett. But Lemke with one out gets to second. It's probably a hit and an error. Even had Kirby come up with that ball, I believe that Lemke would have tried to go to second base with the bottom of the order coming up. Spanked sharply into right center field. And Puckett, a little indecision there. Looks like he thought that Shane Mack had a shot at it, but obviously the glove and the ball is on his glove side. So that was clearly Puckett's ball. They give him a double. I think that's pretty good scoring. I think Lemke, Lemke tries it anyway and probably makes it. Now Pelliard has a chance for the go-ahead RBI. With one out. In the left field, there's Gladden. Two up. But that double by Lemke is valuable even if the Braves do not score here because the pitcher is coming up now and that means that Lonnie Smith would lead off the next down. Yeah, you, you clear the pitcher and that's one thing that the Minnesota Twins didn't do because Jack Morris is leading off the fifth inning. That has already led left four. This batter, Smoltz, drove in three runs during the season. He's big enough to hit the ball, but he struck out his first time. A lot of guys big that can't swing a lick. <laughs> One of the greatest athletes, uh, uh, really, that this country's ever seen, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I've seen him take batting practice at Dodger Stadium. You talk about a bad swing. He was a great basketball player, but a bad hitter. <laughs> That's 
strike two. Two to Smoltz, Lemke at second, two out. Smoltz hits one, two, not left. And we're tied at the end of four, one, one. Another look at the double by Lemke that he couldn't cut off. Combination of not being able to find that comfort zone in playing shallow enough. And also from his earlier years, even though he is still Minnesota's best player, he has lost a step. Now Pelliar throws out Jack Morris to start the fifth inning of this 1-1 game. He may have lost a step in the outfield, Kitty, but he hasn't lost a, a step at home plate, has he? You got that right. <laughs> there is Kirby. Anybody gets on, he'll bat in this inning. Get around to the top of the order. And Gladden walking to the platter. A lot of times a manager or a coach, Tim will move an outfielder in, in, in. They look up a moment later and he's right back where he was. They yeah. get in that habit of playing in a particular spot. Habit and their, their field of vision uh, becomes the same. They want to see as much as they can. And the deeper they play, the more they see. But it could be too deep at the same time. That fear of going back on a ball. A lot of outfielders had it. Strike one to Gladden. It was 0 for 2. And it was 3 out of 14. Under the short, fly to center. For Gant in center field. For the second out. and a comfortable crowd here. This is sweater weather down here in Atlanta. Two outs in the top of the fifth. This is sweat weather too, judging from that game last night and a 1-1 game here in the fifth. It's a tight one tonight and Knobloch has doubled. That was wasted in the first and then he flied to center. He's had five hits in the series. And in the postseason, he's had a dozen hits. So he's not hitting like a rookie. Yeah. Top of the order will be up for Atlanta in the home half of the fifth. One thing about Knobloch that impresses you is he's not overwhelmed by the major leagues. He's not overwhelmed by postseason play. And, and once your ability is established, that's the most important thing. Knowing you can play here. World of confidence in that young man. And only one home run this year, so he knows what he wants to do up there at the plate. And at 281. Speaking of confidence, Jack Llewellyn, who is a psychologist, has been working with John Smoltz the second half of the season and really bolstered the right-hander's confidence, that's for sure. And another strikeout for Smoltz. Down in order to go the Twins for the first time, and we're still tied. At a 6-4, Atlanta has stranded five. Smith 0 for 2. Ball one from Jack Morris. That's the Jane uh, to whom that banner was referring. I assume. And ball two. I guess she's cold. <laughs> Lonnie's only hit in this series. All run. 
Well, Ted Turner and the Atlanta Braves, a lot of fan support this year. And you saw an example of that. And Morris wanted that call. It goes to 3 0. Former President Jimmy Carter seated alongside Ted Turner. And this is Carter. And a strike. Smith, Pendleton, and Gant in this inning. Base hit in the left by Lonnie Smith. And gets it back in. Only the second hit in this series by Lonnie Smith. A fastball, again a 3-1 count. Pendleton hit a home run on the 3-1 count. And now Lonnie Smith on the 3-1 count. That's when a pitcher has to come in with a fastball. Lonnie stops it first. That marks the first time in five innings that Lannis put the leadoff man on. Here's Pendleton. He lined out to left and he homered to right center. Lonnie a threat to run. Not going. Bobby Cox, the manager of the Braves, that tells us that these runners have the green light most of the time. Baseman, Pal Urulo, playing way in tight as they hold against Smith at first. There goes the runner. He missed a step, but he's safe. Thirty-two stolen bases against Jack Morris this year. There were only eight caught stealing. And a fine jump by Lonnie Smith. His feet go one way, his helmet goes the other way, and Lonnie with his first stolen base. And he almost slides off the bag. He may have been watching the National League Championship Series when on a play like that, he slid across the bag, and a tag was made by Jay Bell, the Pirate shortstop. They call him skates. He has difficulty controlling uh, his body. Pendleton drills one to deep center, Lonnie Smith. He's going to hit for third. Nobody out. They're sending him home. A late throw by Knobloch. And out! Harper held the ball. Pendleton ends up at third. What excitement on that one, and I'm surprised they sent him with nobody out. That was a terrible base running play by Lonnie Smith. You don't tag up on a ball hit deep over the outfielder's head. You go a third of the way. We talked about it in last night's game. Lonnie Smith tags up, and now the ball goes over the head of Kirby Puckett, and he's got 180 feet to run, and he's out on a brilliant play by Brian Harper. Watch the short hop, and now holding on to it. How in the world did Harper ever hold on to this ball? My goodness. Smith, like a middle linebacker, plowing into Harper. Ball. And bad yeah. base running by Lonnie Smith. If you can, now, we'll take our time on this. On a play like that, if you go halfway, nobody out, then it's you're off too far to get back to second to tag up and go to third. You go a third of the way. If Puckett makes the catch, then you go to third. Wow. Wow. We saw Dan Gladden. Get nailed by or nail Greg Olson, the catcher in game one. And now Lonnie Smith plowing into Brian Harper. And you won't see two trains meet as hard as those two. 
Wow. Now the runner at third and the infield in and ball one to Gant. That put out at the plate went eight four. Strong throw by now block two. And Pendleton ended up at third. I was really surprised with nobody out and Gant coming up to Jimmy Williams. Seat. It's not Williams' fault. It's Lonnie Smith. That ball would, would have nailed you too, Jack. Yes, sir. Yeah, Kimmy is a former catcher. I don't know how you view that slide. I know Jack Morris had some words with Lonnie Smith as he walked away as if he thought it was a cheap shot, but it just looked like good hard ball from here. He's trying to knock the ball out of Harper's glove. I still don't know how Harper held on to the ball. The in-between hop, the toughest to hold on to. But no, I don't think that's a cheap shot. No. I mean, the catch, well, to Harper, me, Harper blocked the plate. He said, exactly. get me. There's no place to go. Exactly. Well, Harper will fool you because he doesn't have that catcher's body, but he's very wiry, 6'2", over 200 pounds. Lonnie Smith has more of a catcher's body than Brian Harper. Two balls and a strike to Gant. Three and one. That's all they put on that on Lonnie Smith after that play is a little old Band-Aid. Man. Blood all over his towel. That was it. That was about as tough a collision as you'll see in a baseball game. And then a third, one out, infield in, three and one to Gant. Score tied, one one, fifth inning. That's the third walk by Jack Morris. By the way, they ruled Pendleton a double. Now the third walk by Morris, first and third, one out. Kirby Puckett getting the carom off the fence was the key to that play. He got the carom cleanly. The relay throw was perfect, but the short hop by Brian Harper. I can't tell you folks how tough it is to hold on to a ball on an in-between hop. Short hops are, are not that tough, and, and a, a hop that bounces right around the chest is not that tough. But when a catcher, with that catcher's mitt, gets that in-between hop, and then you got a guy like Lonnie Smith plowing into you, and to still hold on to the ball, here it is once more. Watch how he cradles the ball. Oh, man. He took a pasting. Mm. First and third, one out. The batter, David Justice, 0 for 1 with a walk. And a threat to run. And a foul ball. Here's more from Jim Cott. Yeah, Jack and Tim, I think, again, that double is the indication of the Twins playing in an outdoor stadium away from the Metrodome. Kirby Puckett misjudged that ball just to touch. It carried, it jumped as it does here in Atlanta. Not accustomed to that in the indoor stadium. Terry hmm. Leach warming up in the bullpen. Tom Kelly trying to get through this fifth inning time. And there's fake throw to third, which you can do. I think Jack Morris, an indication of uh, how the Twins play on the road this year, he was 13 and 3 at the Metrodome and 5 and 9 on the road. That was very interesting on a trick move by the pitcher Morris. Gant was going back to first all the while, so he was looking for it. It's up to Justice here. Here comes the runner trying to score. He is out. Pendleton is tagged out on another great play by Brian Harper. That's a difficult base running play for that runner. He doesn't know how far away it's going to go. Gant ends up at second, two out. You can put a caption on this inning. Just call it Harper's Bazaar. Two bizarre plays by Brian Harper. I mean, this is, this is an unbelievable performance by a guy they claim can't catch. Barry Tata calling the play. Pendleton knew that he had misjudged the distance on that ball. The count is one and one to Justice with two out. He had a single, a double, a walk, and two players out at the plate. Two balls and a strike to Data. 
Two players out at the plate that could have been at third base with less than two out with the meat of the order coming up. It's going to be tough for the Braves to recover from this inning unless Justice can get a big two-out hit here. It could be the base had loaded nobody out right. instead of a runner second and two out. Justice pops it up into short left. Gladden is there. And the Braves do not score. We have played five, and we are deadlocked. We'll return to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. There, that enables him to use his legs and drive toward the hitter. That's why that fastball is in the 90s most of the time. And the leg, very, very important. The lower body, he throws it with, obviously, with his arm and his hand, but that lower body, very, very important as it is to a hitter. Two quick strikes on Sid Bream leading off in the bottom of the sixth. Sid is 0 for 2, 2 out of 13. Bream Olsen and Lemke against Jack Morris. Morris pitched seven innings against Atlanta in the first game of this World Series. Takes this one into the sixth. Twins are probably saying to themselves, how are we still tied in this one after that last half inning? It's like finding money for Jack Morris. Raining soup. Into the left. Gladden is there. One out here in the sixth inning. Olsen. Remember a remark uh, yesterday before the game, uh, Tom Kelly telling us, Jack, that, you know, players are not machines out there. And, uh, you know, they are human beings. And if you're a member of the Atlanta Braves now, you're, you're probably saying to yourself, what in the world do we have to do to score? They've left six and lost two other runners. Ball one. Six hits, couple of stolen bases, been given three walks. Scored only one. All two to Olsen. He's got a walk and a strikeout. The only guy who scored for the Braves in this game is a guy who walked by Olsen, Barry Pendleton. All the guys who are trying to gone through him, to have gone through him, have been unsuccessful. Half swing, and Morris will throw out Olsen for the second out. Didn't get a very good swing on 2-0, oh, did he? Now, that's the second time. That's uh, what Morris can do to you. He'll throw the slider occasionally when he's uh, behind in the count. And you don't mind his check swing if there are two strikes because you're protecting the plate. But when you're in an offensive position as a hitter, you just hate to take a check swing. Here we see Ted Simmons, Joe Torrey. Torrey used to manage down here in Atlanta. Back in 1982, the last time the Braves won the division. Ted Simmons, the minor league director for the St. Louis Cardinals. Two old catchers. Teaming up uh, to try to bring the Cardinals a pennant. Lefke with a 1-1 count. But they had some thoughts about that collision at home plate. If you've ever donned that gear and had somebody come come into you that hard, uh, you think about it. And of course, we have another catcher up here, Johnny Bench. And here's Lefty shooting one out to Puckett. Down go the Braves in the sixth in order. We have played six and we're tied 1-1. There, that enables him to use his legs and drive toward the hitter. That's why that fastball is in the 90s most of the time. And the leg, very, very important. The lower body, he throws it with, obviously, with his arm and his hand, but that lower body, very, very important as it is to a hitter. Two quick strikes on Sid Bream leading off in the bottom of the sixth. Sid is 0 for 2, 2 out of 13. Bream Olsen and Lemke against Jack Morris. Morris pitched seven innings against Atlanta in the first game of this World Series. Takes this one into the sixth. 
twins are probably saying to themselves, how are we still tied in this one after that last half inning? It's like finding money for Jack Morris. Raining soup. Into the left. Gladden is there. One out here in the sixth inning. There's Greg Olson. Remember a remark uh, yesterday before the game, uh, Tom Selling telling us, Jack, that, you know, players are not machines out there. And, uh, you know, they are human beings. And if you're a member of the Atlanta Braves now, you're, you're probably saying to yourself, what in the world do we have to do to score? They've left six and lost two other runners. Ball one. They have six hits, a couple of stolen bases, and given three walks. Scored only one. Ball two to Olsen. He's got a walk and a strikeout. The only guy who scored for the Braves in this game is a guy who walked by Olsen. Barry Pendleton. All the guys who are trying to gone through him to have gone through him have been unsuccessful. Half swing and Morris will throw out Olsen for the second out. Didn't get a very good swing on 2 and 0, did he? Now that's the second time. That's uh, what Morris can do to you. He'll throw the slider occasionally when he's uh, behind in the count. You don't mind a check swing if there are two strikes because you're protecting the plate. But when you're in an offensive position as a hitter, you just hate to take a check swing. There we see Ted Simmons, Joe Torrey. Torrey used to manage down here in Atlanta. Back in 1982, the last time the Braves won the division. Ted Simmons, the minor league director for the St. Louis Cardinals. Two old catchers. Teaming up uh, to try to bring the Cardinals a pennant. Okay, with a 1 1 count. But they had some thoughts about the collision at home plate. If you've ever donned that gear and had somebody come, come into you that hard, uh, you think about it. And of course, we have another catcher up here, Johnny Bench. Here's Lefty shooting one out to Puckett. Down go the Braves in the sixth in order. We have played six and we're tied 1-1. Latin America. As far south as Ecuador, do they travel? We've got enough announcers for 15 games here. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Shane Mack leading off. And Mack is in dire straits. 0 for 2 and 0 for 13. All you can do is keep swinging, and it's one and one from Smokes. He's in the hole now. It will be Mack, and then Pagliarulo, who has driven home the only Minnesota run, and Greg Gagne. Smokes has retired the last seven. Two and two. Pitcher warming up, Carl Willis down in the left field corner. Because the pitcher is due to bat fourth in this seventh inning. And Mack went around. He's the sixth strikeout victim. He is 0 for 3 and 0 for 14. Well, uh, that would, uh, with Willis up, that would indicate that Tom Kelly would probably pinch hit for Morris regardless of whether a runner were in scoring position. If, for instance, there were two outs and a man on first, I wonder if that would be the case. Remember, Morris is working on three days rest. If it goes to seven games, Morris will have to come back on Sunday. The Twins have a little bit more of a cushion than the Atlanta Braves since they lead the Braves two to one. So we'll see what Tom Kelly's going to do. I guess the most interesting scenarios if they go in order will Morris go back out there this batter is Pagliarulo two for two there's Jack Morris wearing the batting helmet he may or may not come up in this inning if he doesn't it'll be the eighth getting late isn't it we're one 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 ball two strikes 
two strikes. Tom Kelly did everything he could to win that game last night. He fired his entire battery of guns at these Braves, but Atlanta won it 5-4-12. It Pally Arulo lost one into right field. That ball might leave the ballpark. It's going to be gone. Pally Arulo's third hit of the night puts the Twins on top 2-1. to one. Well, he got that big home run against Toronto, and he scores against Atlanta. And that probably will keep Jack Morris in the game. A lot of ways to go right now for Tom Kelly. The big thing is he has the lead, and it's remarkable after that fifth inning that the Braves had. After two curveballs on which Pal Urulo swung through, Smoltz tries to come inside, and it looked like Pal Urulo was sitting on it, and he lost his second postseason home run this year. Now a swinging strike by Gagne. We had some doubts up here at first whether it was going to go, but Pal Urulo knew it was gone. Gagne has struck out twice. a strike two count now. So you go into the mind of John Smoltz and try to think about you can see how upset he is. He had blown those two curveballs by Pagliarulo. He tried to sneak the fastball by inside but was unsuccessful. And a foul ball. There's something strange going on here Tim in that Smoltz is due to bat second in the bottom of this inning, and there is absolutely nothing doing down in the Atlanta bullpen. So yeah. they're going to go with him. I, I would imagine Bobby Cox is thinking that he probably has time. They, they do have the bottom of the seventh to get somebody ready. I think it may de uh, depend on how far they get in the hole. If it's two to one, it may be a different pitcher than three or four to one. Still on two to Gagne. And he strikes out for the third time. Olsen throws him out again. John Smoltz, after the two breaking balls, tries to throw the fastball. That's a four-seamer. We talked about the sweet spot a couple of times in last night's game. Just over the fence, and John Smoltz Obviously upset. I mean, you never know what he's thinking, but I would imagine he's thinking he looked bad on two curveballs, and I tried to throw the fastball. Why didn't I come back with another curveball? You know, people talk about second guessing that players don't do that. Players do that all the time. You try not to, but again, you're not a machine. You're a human being. They're going to lift Jack Morris here. He will be finished after six innings. And Gene Larkin is going to pinch hit. And Tom Kelly will turn to that bullpen, which has served him so well in the postseason. Smoltz has two strikeouts in the inning and seven in the game. And Gene Larkin will bat for Jack Morris. and there's strike one. Morris pitched six innings, one run, six hits. Struck out four and he walked three. And he has a chance to win his fourth World Series game without a loss. One and one to Larkin. He's in the hole now. If Jack Morris wins, he'll be seven and one in postseason play during his career. With four postseason wins this year, only Dave Stewart of the Oakland Athletics has done it in postseason play. There is, however, one asterisk. Back in 1981, you remember that was a strike season, and Bert Hooten did it. He beat Houston in the mini playoffs, and then he won twice against Montreal and once in the series against the Yankees. 
First baseman Breen takes that one. One run, one hit. The Pagliarino homer, seventh inning stretch time, two to one Twins. the seventh and the Twins lead it two to one. Cagliarulo has driven home both runs for the Twins. They call on um, Carl Willis his second World Series appearance. And as John Spoltz went to the dugout he was unhappy. Remember those two curve balls swing and a miss by Pagliarulo and then the fast ball he tried to sneak by him. I would imagine that's what he's thinking about right now. Smoltz in the dark. He's going to be lifted for a pinch hitter in this inning. Braves trail by a run. And they pinch hit for Rafael Belliard at the shortstop. And they send up Jeff Treadway. Treadway, a 300 plus hitter during the regular season. Two for six in postseason and one for three in the World Series. Last night, when uh, Carl Willis went to his mouth, you see he does a lot of things around his mouth. It could be that allegations and the scouts have told the Braves that he may be throwing a spitter. Whenever a pitcher spends that much time around his mouth, Bobby Cox and his organization is inclined to think that Willis may be loading them up. Treadway takes a strike and it's one and one. It'll be Treadway, then another pinch hitter, <laughs> and then Lonnie Smith. Treadway pops it in the left for Gladden, who's been very busy. Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Sitting with a couple of uh, Cardinals, a couple of catchers, uh, Ted Simmons and Joe Toy. What would you think of that uh, collision at home plate, Ted? Oh, it's right on the nose. I mean, it gets real exciting in the game when something like that happens. Uh, Harper took a severe bolt, but he hung on. The best one and the worst one you've seen. You had one this year in your park. That's one of the best ones. And the other one was when uh, Langford from our ball club knocked out Dalton. And we win a ball game. Same type of uh, collision at home plate. He's going to feel it in the morning. Uh, Don on you guys up there that every, everybody involved here is a cardinal. These two guys, Harper, Smith, McCarver, and Buck. Back to you. <laughs> well, Tommy Gregg never played for the Cardinals. He's the pinch hitter here for John Smoltz. Smoltz leaving the game, trailing two to one. Gregg takes ball one. Pat O'Brien could have put uh, Jim Cott in that boat, too. Kenny, a member of the 1982 World Champion Cardinals. That's who you Strike to Greg. What is John Spoltz pitch? Well, seven innings, two runs, seven hits, struck out seven, walk none. And Willis gets ahead on the count. You see all that movement around the mouth. You know, the glove goes up there, the hand goes up there. You're really not supposed to go to your mouth. When you're on the mound, even though tonight may be cool enough for the umpires to allow the pitchers to blow on their hands, see there's a lot of movement around there. I mean that creates suspicion right there. Of course, that's half the battle for a pitcher. Sure, make them think it. If you're not doing it, make them think you're doing it. One and two to the pinch hitter, Tommy Gregg. Tired in the bottom of the seventh. The Twins try to gain a three games to one edge over Atlanta. And they lead it two to one. Three and two. Well, has walked a couple of his other World Series appearance. New pitcher for Atlanta is going to be Mark Wollers. Bottom 
with a seven, three and two to Greg. Strike called, and Greg is down. Willis gets his first strikeout. We have Richie Garcia, who is an American League umpire, and with us during the series. Uh, Richie, uh, where do you draw the line as far as going to your mouth if you're uh, an umpire and, and somebody like Carl Willis is, is up there? Well, the main thing that you want him to do, or you notice he goes to his neck, well, anytime he goes through any part of his skin, the umpires are going to make him wipe. As far as his glove going to his mouth, uh, I, I personally believe it, that it's just a habit that he has. I don't believe he's doing anything at all. We've watched him during the season. He's been accused during the season of throwing a spitter. Oh, we've watched him. Right? Well, he's been accused, but uh, we've watched him, and I've watched him myself. Here's Lonnie hitting one attack to tie it. Pitcher is Mark Wallers. He is in his third World Series game. Only pitched an inning and a third. We have a new shortstop. That's Jeff Blauser playing where Belliard had been playing. In the top of the order for the Twins. Handle and scoops it. Good play. What a bad roll for four. Pendleton playing in for the bunt. Watch the backhand. From his angle. Wasn't easy, was it? Soft hands. Made now, it look easy, though. It sure did. Now at the plate, it's not blocked. He doubled in the first, one for three. Ball one from Wallers. Kirby will bat next. Kirby Puckett. Too. One problem with the Atlanta defense right now, Jeff Blauser hit in the right elbow, a fungal bat hit him. Pat Corrales, I talked to Jeff before the game. I'm not too sure he'd tell me if his throwing arm were hurting him, but he said uh, it's okay. Now that can be, you know, defined as a lot of things. Is it okay to throw from the hole? We'll see. Walters comes back with a strike. This young pitcher, Mark Walters, from Holyoke, Mass. His pitching skills are totally refined. He can blow the ball. He can strike you out. And he does issue a few walks. Two and two. I knew you'd get a hold of your pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to. It's like uh, my reference to Memphis, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got to get the paper city on the map. Sure. Right outside Springfield. Or is Springfield outside Holyoke? That's about eight miles from Springfield. in the series 12 and postseason play. Think of all the hometowns that 
represented here on, on both clubs. And in this country, Latin America, Canada. It's the beauty of baseball, isn't yep. it? Sure. Brings them all together. All sorts of folks from everywhere. Into right field, and that is a foul ball. That's where Knobloch got his double earlier, and this one just missed. Watch Drew Coble, the right field umpire. Now, boy, that's about as close <laughs> as you can get. I mean, you can't get any closer to call it a ball. That ball was uh, you know, right near his feet. That's why there are six umpires carried in postseason. Play. Drew Coble right on him. Almost hit him. Yeah, he's had some tough plays. Oh. The thing about an umpire, see, if you're in foul territory and the ball hits you, you know it's foul. <laughs> <laughs> battle here between Mark Wolders and Chuck Knobloch. He has just missed. Oh, Knobloch led off. I don't know. It's three and two. to go with his outfit. It's a good one. We're in the eighth inning. We're tied 2-2. One out. Wallers in relief of Smoltz. And Navlock gets on base with one out ahead of Puckett. Game five right here at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium tomorrow night. And our starting time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Kevin Tampany, a winner earlier against Tommy Glavin, coming back on three days rest. Both of these pitchers. Glavin was a loser in this series to this point. Well, Bobby Cox comes out. And he's already made the call for Mike Stanton. He'll be the third Atlanta hurler. right-handed batters as he does left-handers. The unusual thing, however, in this particular case, Kirby Puckett led the majors this year against left-handed pitchers. He batted 4-0-6. He's licking his chops. One on, one out. He's one for three in this game. In the right field, David Justice to the track, waiting. Runner tags at first and stays at first. Two out. Now the left-handed batter will come up. And Ken Herbeck. First pitch hitting. Kirby Puckett chooses one. Can't get around on it. Mike Stant with 74 appearances this year as a rookie. That's four shy of Tim Burke's rookie record. Back in 1985. Herbeck is wearing the collar. It's a big swing and fouls the ball. He's an everyday player, and left-handers don't bother him, and he has an opposite field stroke sometimes with power. How about Puckett? One for four and two out of 16. Mm. They're calling out Cheater to Herbeck. There goes the runner. No throw on a stolen base for Knobloch. Knobloch gets down to second with two out. Hey, he had such a good jump on that one. What you do is throw to third to cut him off. I mean, not only no play, look at this jump by Knobloch. And what do you have to lose? I mean, the chances of you scoring on an extra base hit are not great, but scoring on a Herbeck single is great. Fine base running by Knobloch. Against Stanton, that's 10 steals and 11 attempts. Stanton's tough against left-handed batters, and that makes it one and two. In fact, Stanton limited left-handed hitters to a 194 mark this season. Runner at second, two out, eighth inning of a 2-2 game. Fastball up 
and in to Ken Herbeck. And it evens the count two and two. A little old hit would put the Twins on top. Ball ball keeps Herbeck up there. You saw the high and tight one, and now here's the breaking ball to Herbeck. He just stays alive. Serious. Well, this is a serious game here. 2 2 in the home half of the eighth with Gant, Justice, and Bream coming up against Carl Willis, who worked the seventh and allowed a home run to Lonnie Smith. Cal Yarulo drove in a run. Hamilton Homer. Cal Yarulo hit a home run. So did Lonnie Smith, and here we are. And this is a dangerous team, Atlanta, to flirt with in the late innings. Tie game or whatever. They. They've got some people that can knock it out of this friendly park. Ron Gant, one of them, he's uh, leading it off here. 32 home runs on the year. I think I'd uh, play Pal Yarulo on the line in this situation. Gagney over near the hole, and Pal Yarulo appears to be playing straight up. Gant's the type of guy who can spank it down the line. Willis gets a strike in there to Ron Gant, who's had a single and a walk. Pal Yarulo. Steps off the line and Gagney playing in the hole at short. You know what Gant's thinking. One and one. Well, we had a bizarre Atlanta fifth. Can that fellow see or not? Security, I guess he can. Doesn't look like it from the outside. of the fifth Atlanta did everything but score a run they had a single a double a walk a stolen base a wild pitch and hits a right to Pagliarulo is he in the right spot one out he hit it to his right two steps to his right here it is right here two steps to his right Two steps and have a ball. That's exactly what uh, Pagliarulo did. And we're going to have another pitcher as Tom Kelly comes out. Mark Guthrie makes his third World Series appearance. A tender, born in Buffalo, New York, lives in Venice, Florida. Takes over with the bases empty, one out, bottom of the eighth. And his first opponent will be David Justice. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. 2-2 two, two the score. Bottom of the eighth. Ball one. Jack Morris allowed one run. And Carl Willis a run. One ball, one strike. Very interesting graphic there. That's lifetime. Dave Justice 311 against left handers. Two balls and a strike. Alejandro Pena on his feet in the right field corner. Two to Justice. Guthrie, two games, two and two-third innings, only one hit. 
who pitched in that marathon last night. Brian Hunter moves on deck to bat for Green. See, when a manager makes a middle inning or late inning pitching change, what he tries to do is trade a pitcher for a hitter. He wants the move to be made right now. That's Tom Kelly, and Bobby Cox is going to accommodate him. That keeps justice up at the plate. We are at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, game four of the 91 World Series. And look at that line score, dead even. 2-7-0 for each club with one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Airship Shamu is bringing us tonight's aerial shots at the contest. Pendleton a home run. Pagliarulla a home run. Bonnie Smith a home run. Three home runs in a 2-2 game. And it's a good one like last night's was. Got three to Justice. And a strikeout for the second out of the inning. The key plays in this game, back in the fifth inning, with nobody out, and Lonnie Smith on second base. A long drive by Ron Gant, or make that carry Pendleton to center field, and the collision at home plate, remarkably, Brian Harper holds onto the ball. And then several pitches later, on, with one out and Pendleton on, I should say that was a Greg Gagne squeeze play that didn't work in the fourth inning. So those are two of the plays that haven't worked for either team. But that fifth inning, a bad inning for the Atlanta Braves, and if they lose, they'll go back to that inning. Hunter the batter, pinch hitting for Breed. Taking that outside pitch for ball two. Two out and nothing shaking here in the eighth. guess that Hunter is swinging. 3 and 0, 2 out. Hunter with a big home run in the seventh game of the NLCS last Thursday off John Smiley. He is swinging and drills it into right center field, but Shane Mack goes back to make the catch, and now we've played eight innings of a 2-2 two -two game. City's cool. El otro evento llegó. La Serie Mundial de Puerto Rico. Los gemelos de los alcaldes contra los bravos de los artistas. Jugadas espectaculares. El más divertido encuentro político-artístico de todos los tiempos. El otro evento. Este viernes a las 8 por Guapa en... Lonnie Smith, and then the wild pitch and getting Terry Pendleton. And that squeeze play uh, by the Minnesota Twins in the fourth inning, you saw that too. So those are the three key plays in this ball game thus far. Ryan Harper is two for three tonight, facing Mike Stanton, and Brian Hunter plays first. In for a strike to start the night. Harper and then Mack and then Pagliarulo, who has three hits. Harper, six out of 12 in the series. And he's a home run threat in this park. He hit 10 during the season. One ball, two strikes. Airship Shamu bringing us the aerial shots of this game. Twins and the Braves. And up from Orlando, Florida, and SeaWorld is Shamu. Quite a sight in itself, isn't it? Two balls, two strikes. Minnesota has left four. Atlanta's left a half dozen.
Rod Harper earlier. Not many walks, not many strikeouts. He makes contact. He used to be reckoned with. See Harper talking to himself. Right there, you could see he's got a code in hitting. You could see him move his lips. He's got a code in hitting. It's probably keep the front shoulder in or one key. You could see him talk right before he got in the in the box. A lot of hitters do that. Another fly ball in a short right and caught by Justin Barr for Atlanta. What a saber that was. And after the foul ball by Harper, Justice changed his position in right field. We talked about Harper, how he was talking to himself, and what? He's talking about a key right there, and maybe he was saying, if I hit a little ducker to right field, David Justice, don't be there, but he was. Justice made a good play on that one for the first out in the night. Bringing Shane Mack up there. Mack would like to get his first hit of the series here in the ninth inning. He is 0 for 3 and 0 for 14. One ball, one strike. You'd think with, uh, you know, 50,000 plus people in the stands that uh, you wouldn't be lonely out there, but some guys get lonely and they talk to themselves. Pitchers do it all the time. A lot of hitters do it. Work on one key, try to put it in uh, motion, and you could clearly see Harper telling himself something to try to keep him his focus right there. It's his old psychologist. Yeah, right, right. Saves a lot of money. <laughs> Shane Mack trying to battle his way on base with one out here in the ninth. Out of play, and it's two and two. Stanton has set down the three men he has faced, following Smoltz and Wallers to the hill. Supreme taking a baseball apart, trying to find a message in there. Came back to Justice. That's the second out, and Mack can't buy a hit. He's 0 for 4 and 0 for 15. Leading two games to one, but tied here 2 2 in the ninth. Twins with many opportunities to score last night, and it was the Atlanta Braves who came through. They hit by Mark Lemke in the 12th inning, and the Atlanta Braves all year have come from nowhere to win ball games. Steve Avery, the starter last night, Atlanta winning. The National League Western Division by one game over the Dodgers. Then coming from behind to beat the Pirates. They're behind in this series. Ball one to Scott Leia sent up there by Tom Kelly to bat for Pagliarulo. Pagliarulo singled and drove home a run in the second. Got another hit in the fourth. And hit a home run in the seventh to put the Twins on top for a brief period of time. Terry Pendleton is right on the line at third. Yeah, with two outs and uh, and nobody on, you want to make sure that you don't get any extra base hits. But think about the managers. Both pitchers, Guthrie and Stanton, have made each manager change a hitter. Guthrie had to pitch to Hunter instead of Reed, and now Stanton has to pitch to Lance instead of Pagliarulo. Groans on that call, two balls and a strike. And as we found out last night, it is possible to run out of players, huh? <laughs> Minnesota did everything but that. Had only two starting pitchers on the bench when the game was over. Now standing behind on the count to Leas, who stroked a game-winning home run for the Twins in game two. That's a strike. Scott Leas did. Uh, Tommy 
Minnesota won it three to two because of that home run. He is up with a two two count two out. And another foul. So if you're doing the chop and you have a foul ball landed, that kind of messes up the section that was doing the chop. They have to catch the foul ball. That section right below us, that kind of messed up their chop there. Could win it. We're tied 2-2. Two -two. And the batters will be Olsen, Lindsay, and Jeff Blauser. Blauser replaced Billiard. Those are the six, seven, and eight hitters. This crowd wants a run. And the Minnesota pitcher is Mark Guthrie. And speaking of pitchers, what a job Mike Stanton did. Five hitters in a row that he retired. And what hitters they were. Puckett, Max. Olsen takes ball one. Guthrie got the final two outs in the eighth. Those are the rally caps of the Braves. There's Steve Avery in the forefront. That's right call. And they call him their shark caps. They're going for the kill. A run here in the bottom of the ninth would tie this series of two games apiece. Hard hit to Kanky. Bad hockey stays with it and out. At first, a great play by the shortstop. That ball was whistling and took a nasty hop. Now, one thing, if your third baseman is playing more toward the line, you as a shortstop have to keep toward the hole. See Pagliarulo or Leas near the line, and Gagne cheating over there, especially with the left-hander pitching to a right-hander, and he makes a rather easy play out of it. Had to feel it a bit off to the side as it took that hop. Guthrie has retired three in a row. Deals with Lemke. He hits one deep into left center field. That big chase at the wall and up again. He's going to end up at third with one out. Maybe bring it home in one place to go. He's coming out to the mound. 
what he could do. He could he could walk Lauser and then allow Cabrera to be announced and then bring in Steve Bedrosian and then Bobby Cox would have to waste the man. I don't know whether he's going to take him out now or just bring Bedrosian in. We'll see. I think he's going to walk him. I think he said walk him, and then they're going to get Cabrera out there, and then they're going to make a move, and that way they bring the left-hander back. So he said walk him, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And then from there on, I think they're going to bring in the Trojan to pitch to Cabrera after he's announced, and then Bobby Cox has to make a move. We'll see. Lemke in a spot to be a hero again. What's Bobby Cox going to do? Well, he'll have to watch the intentional walk being given to Jeff Blauser. And Rosen's in the bullpen. And Atlanta has a pitch in on deck. But he's not going to be able to hit. They're going to bring Petrosian in to pitch to Cabrera. The Braves have one other left-hander left, Jerry Willard. Well, we'll see what comes of it as Tim McCarver thinks as a manager and tries to forecast the many possibilities. Lemke keeping a wary eye on home plate as the intentional walk is being expected here. Regardless of what happens, the outfield is in. The outfield really is playing a deep infield position because the long fly ball right now is going to score the runner anyway. That's why you pull the outfield in. Now they're going to wait until Cabrera is announced and we'll take another look at the triple by Mark Lipke who finds the gap and he finds third base too and that's what's going to happen Cabrera was announced and now Kelly's going to come out and make the move and bring Bedrosian in. Bedrosian will pitch to either Cabrera or another pitch hitter well now Bedrosian is in the game. Tight spot for the Twins. 